Who is playing right now an NBA player that reminds you most of Michael Jordan? Well, Max and I discussed this um, just the other day in terms of style. Uh, when I look at MJ, nobody's close, obviously, and Kobe, God rest his soul, is gone, and he obviously, uh, but I look at Kawhi Leonard. Um, I look at Kawhi Leonard because of the fallaway jump shot, the pull-up jump shot, uh, his ability to defend and really, really drape all over you, his strength body-wise, um, and how he can punish defenders even that look his size, or dare I say are a little bit smaller or even bigger to some degree. The kind of, of, of aggression that Kawhi has, particularly when it's time to close, I'll give credit where credit is due. Again, I'm not comparing anybody to MJ. I'm not, simply, I'm not saying that somebody is on MJ's level or would be uh, on MJ's level because I don't believe that to be the case. But with the eye, using the eye test and seeing how they play from a stylistic perspective and what they're doing on the court in certain moments, Kawhi Leonard is the name that will come to mind most. Look, if this was 10, 12 years ago, it'd be Kobe Bryant, like Stephen A. said, easily, because yes. he was a virtual clone of Jordan. Easily. Not, his talent not pitched quite as high, but almost. Like, I don't think there's ever been two superstars more similar. Kobe took aim at Jordan, so I'm going to be like that, but better. I'll be one better, 24, right? Not 23. He almost got there. Um, so, but, there, but, you know, tragically, Kobe is obviously his career ended, and he's no longer around. When you look around the NBA, say, who's most like Mike? Stephen A., from a stylistic point of view, in a way, it's funny because he's kind of like Mike and kind of like Shaq. The way Antetokounmpo takes it so hard to the rim, I think, is actually reminds me of that in a way. Like, oh, my God, he's just attacking, attacking. But, but, and I hear you stylistically about Kawhi. He's the great two-way scorer. But in a larger sense, it's LeBron. And for the obvious reasons. You know, the, the litmus test for me is, who's the star of Space Jam? It's that, that guy's league. And I thought for a minute, Stephen A., that it should have been Steph Curry. The year he won his first MVP, the, the Warriors were on their way to winning 73 games. Steph was just doing things we'd never seen before. And I thought, it's actually Steph's league. I assume they would smoke the Cavs. But LeBron led him to a seven game, uh, game seven win at Oracle. And to, to say, no, this is still my league. And even now, when I believe Kawhi is the guy and where he goes, that's the balance of power. And I'm a Lakers fan. I picked the Clippers, and I picked them this year to beat them. But it's still LeBron's league in a larger sense because he's still competing at MVP level. His team has the best record in the conference. And whatever I thought about Kawhi winning, like if they play it out, I'm not counting LeBron out. LeBron could win it. It's possible. And if he does, as he's reminded us in the past, there he is on top of the mountain again. Uh, the reason that we haven't seen the level of dominance with, as we have with Jordan is, number one, Jordan's a little better. And number two, Jordan retired for two years, recharged his batteries, came back, retired for a bunch of years again. When he came back the second time, we don't really consider that Jordan. LeBron has just kept on plugging away and has never fallen off the cliff. Well, he's declined a little, but... Really, he's still playing at an amazingly high level. So in that sense, he's the star well, of Space Jam, Stephen A. It's his league as it once was Jordan's. Well, well, let me go a little bit all over the place here because there's several points that I want to address that you wanted to say, that you said. Number one, let's remember that LeBron came straight out of high school. Jordan played three years at North Carolina. OK, so he was a little bit older when he would came into the league than LeBron was when LeBron came into the league. Number two, the game was far more physical when Jordan played than when LeBron has played, even though LeBron gets hacked all the time. Plus, LeBron is playing in a softer version of the NBA. Plus, he's a man amongst boys in terms of his own physicality, because unlike Jordan, he walked around like 30 to 40 pounds heavier at 250 plus. So we got to take that into consideration as well. Number three, Greek Freak should have never even been mentioned, because I see no similarities there. Number four, when we take into account LeBron James, if you're talking about the total picture, Max, like we did months ago when we were talking about LeBron off the court, or weeks ago, rather, when we were talking about the, the load that LeBron has to carry off the court, as well as on the court, being the face of the league, being the iconic figure, and all of those different things, yeah, certainly you have a point there. And in, in this last point, I certainly don't want to 
I'm not trying to impugn LeBron in any way because I think that LeBron, particularly this last year, shows that when he wants to amp it up, he amped it up. And give him credit for listening to Anthony Davis when Anthony Davis came on our show and said he had implored uh, LeBron James to play better defense this season than he did the season before Anthony Davis arrived, LeBron's first in L.A. But what we see LeBron or have seen LeBron do in recent memory, more so in recent memory than just this past season, what we've seen LeBron do is pick and choose his spots defensively to really, really show up and remind you what he can do when he really, really locks in. Jordan was always that way on the defensive side of the ball. Kawhi is well, let me, always I wanna, that way on the defensive side of the ball, and I don't think that can be ignored. Yeah. I want to explain what I mean by the Greek freak, because on the surface, you're right. It doesn't seem like there's a comparison there. However, I'm referring to young Jordan, not older Jordan, unbridled aggression, but highly efficient. You know, Jordan was attacking, attack, always attacking the rim and always being really efficient, even as a mid-range, when he would shoot the mid-range, he was attacking and efficient. Westbrook attacks not as efficiently as a guy like Giannis. We know why. Giannis is seven feet tall. But there, it's not coincidental that Shaq, that there's a reason Shaq comes out and says, that guy's the first guy pointing to Giannis, where he, you could call him Superman. Because we watched Patrick Ewing as younger people, Stephen A. And even Patrick Ewing, a big, strong guy like Ewing, fadeaway jump shots and stuff like that, especially as his career went on, especially. Shaq was the one center, including Olajuwon, Robinson, you know, all those guys who always was super aggressive going to the rim. And Jordan, as a young man, was the same way. Attack, attack, attack. And in that way, Giannis reminds me as a young guy and, and doing it efficiently in a winning effort. You know, Jordan was doing that I guess for a team that made the playoffs with no other good players. Yeah, but I'm still, I'm still going to be diametrically opposed to your point of view because I'm looking at Giannis, and Giannis attacking the basket reminded me more of Shaq than Jordan. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.